More reaction now. Attorney General Loretta Lynch uh, facing some tough questions about describing the San Bernardino shooters as, quote, lone wolves. Listen to this exchange on NBC's Meet the Press. We've been hearing this for six years, yes. that the, the threat has changed, and it looks like we have no new ways to stop this threat. I mean, I, do, are, do we have to just accept the idea that this is uh, the way we have to live now? Accept the idea that a lone wolf inspired by an ISIS website could just mow people down? I don't think we should ever accept the idea that someone can come along and take away our safety and our freedom. I think we have to do everything we can to prevent that. Tom Johnson, a senior fellow at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies and senior editor of the Long War Journal that's done some great reporting on this incident and others. Tom, let's just talk about this term because we're going to hear it a lot and we have from elected officials, from the president, from Loretta Lynch. What do you think of the term lone wolf, how it applies here to this particular terrorist attack? You know, lone wolves is just a term that doesn't mean anything. Uh, you know, the bottom line is what they're trying to get at is whether or not this couple actually had any operational or professional ties overseas to terrorists that direct them to do this or gave them assistance. There's a mixed story on that right now. We don't know the answer. There are some leads that say that these two may have had ties to professional terrorists. So it's, I think it's too early to totally rule that out. However, what these two, at least we know, is that they acted out, at least in terms of this operation, they, they laid the groundwork for this for a while, and they got away with that. And this is what the authorities are, like Lynch are trying to say, is that basically there are individuals out there who are going to basically commit these plots, and we don't think they have any ties to professionals, and they can still commit a terrorist, terrorist attack like this. Why does that matter? Well, it matters for a couple of reasons. One, because as most what they call lone wolves, first of all, most of them are not terribly effective. This couple was effective. Most of them aren't. Okay, We saw in Paris and France, for example, just a few weeks ago, what true professional terrorists can do. They locked down an entire nation you know, and, and created a massive manhunt. You had military roaming the capital, a western capital. That's the difference between sort of what they call lone wolves and professionals. But the problem here is as this ideology spreads, what you're going to find are there are going to be more effective individuals who are drawn to this ideology who are going to commit terrorist attacks who may not have any professional assistance or training. And what difference does it make if you're the one that gets shot by one of them? Whether they're right. a professional and they have direct ties or not, terrorism is terrorism. So does, the, does this matter when we're, we're struggling with some of the terms? Do you see it have a direct effect on the policy and the strategy to actually to actually beat back the terrorists. It's interesting. I have a different take on this. In one sense, it matters. In another sense, it doesn't. In the sense it doesn't matter, it's all part of the same ideology, right? So that's what we're trying to get at. It doesn't matter from that standpoint whether or not they're pre uh, professionally trained or not. It does matter in terms of how the threats manifest themselves against us because, like I said, to date, most of the professionally trained terrorists and plots have been more successful, more lethal than what they're calling lone wolves. And that's an important distinction to make. However, the problem is as the number of these individuals spreads, as the ideology spreads, the number of individuals attracted to the ideology spreads, that raises the bar, the risk to all of us, basically. When you, you've looked at this very closely, you've looked at the communication from ISIS as well, calling these particular individuals supporters rather than soldiers. You say that's really key. What matters to us is how we keep ourselves safe. So how do you think soldiers versus supporters being led by ISIS directly or not should impact how we change our strategy to make sure that the country remains safe? Well, look at it from the perspective of the FBI. What they're trying to do is they're tracking, you know, potentially hundreds of individuals who could be like this couple, right? And from their perspective, they have to figure out which ones of these individuals are actually capable of doing something like this and which ones aren't. So that's why it becomes important to figure out if they've had professional training, they travel overseas, because that it, it basically that makes creates sense. Yeah, a number sure. of red flags that are issued. I would say that from the ISIS statements, for example, these we track ISIS uh, publications very, very closely and propaganda very closely. There's no indication so far we've seen that there are any operational ties to these two. Their statements that they put out, basically from ISIS, have been very much sort of like, well, you know, you guys did this in our name and thank you for doing it and you're our supporters and they want to take credit for it, but there's no evidence that these basically, they knew that this attack was coming or that they got help. That is important. It is important to know exactly what, where it's coming from. Because from the FBI's perspective, for example, if you start finding couples who are capable of doing this sort of thing, ma you know, massing an arsenal and basically going in and shooting up a holiday party, then the threat has evolved and now you have a whole new level of, of problems. And perhaps you can get more aggressive if, if you start taking those couples more seriously, right. even if they don't have the, direct, right. the direction. From and you put more resources into it. I think our law enforcement and intelligence officials are, are undermanned right now. And so you maybe need more resources to track down these types of threats. It's certainly something we're hearing. Tom, great to have you on the program. Appreciate Thanks. it. John?